Hey booktube, this is Kelly. Thank you so much for watching books I'm not reading. It's Friday. I am I am wiped out. I'm so tired. <laughs> but I really wanted to check in with you about my reading progress. Um, and this is an all Jane Austen July edition again of kind of a Friday reads and reviews. So I'm just gonna go through this really quickly. I um, I did finish reading Dancing with Mr. Darcy, which is um, the best of the Jane Austen short story competition. And there were some delightful stories in it, in this collection. There were some stories that I didn't feel were very strong and I did disagree with um, the winner and runner runners up um, of the book, but uh, yeah. So I think I'm going to part with this book. If there's somebody out there who would like it, please, please let me know in the comments section um, and I'll see what I can do. I also started reading with Rainy, from Rainy Day Reads, Among the Jainites by Deborah Yaffe, which is about the fan world of Jane Austen. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this one in just a second. Um, this weekend, I'm going to be starting Longbourn by Joe Baker, which is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice from the perspective of the servants who lived uh, in, the, in the Bennett family home. So uh, I have heard so many great things about this. I'm really, really excited to uh, dive into this this weekend. Then, last night, I finished Aisha at Last, by Uzma Jalaluddin and I have to tell you guys this is a great book. <laughs> I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself and I'm so excited to see this is, was her debut novel and I'm so excited um, to see what she writes next. Um, it's supposed to be a retelling of Pride and Prejudice but it's really pretty pretty loose. Like, like there's some characters that, I mean, there were actually two characters that I thought could have been Catherine de Berg. Um, but, uh, it, it isn't a straightforward, you know, this person is, aside from Elizabeth Bennet and, and Mr. Darcy, um, Aisha and, uh, Khalid, uh, who on the back of the book says he, he dresses like he belongs in the 7th century. <laughs> but they were fantastic characters, um, and the side characters were, were also very, very interesting. This takes place in a neighborhood in Toronto, um, a Muslim community. Um, there are people from India, people from Pakistan, people from Afghanistan, and uh, truthfully, like, I don't even think it needed the Pride and Prejudice retelling. I mean, I understand that that's a, a great way to market the book, maybe, but um, I, I really hope that she will continue to write books and, and not feel like she needs to stand in anyone's shadow to retell anyone else's story. Like, these characters were, especially the two main characters, were so well drawn, were so well crafted, and, um, you know, I had a few problems with it. Uh, occasionally it felt a little bit like someone was picking petals off a flower. He loves me, he loves me not, and she loves me, she loves me not, that kind of thing. But uh, I, I, I was so sucked into the world. I can't even tell you, I had, I think when I came home from work um, on Thursday, I had 60 pages left. And I had a couple of things that I had to do, and then I was just like, I told Jason, I was like, leave me alone. <laughs> do not interrupt me, I have to finish this book. Even though I knew how it was going to end, right? Um, it's a wonderful world that she's, I, I don't want to say created, because it, it sounds like it is a real, a real neighborhood. Um, I think Jen from Remembered Reads talked to me, left a comment about this neighborhood. And, uh, so I don't want to say a world that she created, but a world that she used and characters that she brought to life within it, I thought were, it was just fantastic, so... It's, it's probably a four-star book for me, but at the same time, like, 
I'm already excited about the next time I get to read this book and I'm super excited to see what other things um, she creates. It was, yeah, it was fantastic. So really, I just loved it. Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm reading Among the Jay Knights, as I said, with, with Rainy. Uh, and it's interesting to see kind of like this is like almost like a, a study of a like a subculture of Jainites, uh, fans, fans of Jane Austen. And one of the things that I'm I'm just I keep thinking about and I've been thinking about a lot of this month is do do we as as lovers of <laughs> of Jane Austen do we want to hang out with her characters or do we want to hang out with Jane Austen? And the reason why I ask that is because I still cannot get Claire Tomlin's biography of Jane Austen out of my head. Um, this is a five-star book for sure. We'll see what happens <laughs> with this one. But... But Deborah Alphys in her in her book seems to be arguing that people want to to be to be Elizabeth Bennet and they want to find now don't get me wrong, like some of us we waited a while hoping Mr. Darcy or Mr. Knightley would wander into our lives. <laughs> um but I think that's different from like who would you choose to spend an evening with? And, uh, anyway, so I also feel, and, and again, I have, I'm not done with this book, so I don't want to judge it unfairly. I, I don't know what star rating I'm going to give it, but yeah, it seems like it's really the extremists, um, who love Jane, like, who are Janeites, and, and that these people want to either embody some of her characters or yeah they want to they want to talk about the characters as though they're real people um which like I said with some characters I I kind of understand I, I kind of I kind of can see it but I mean like there's just like almost like consp the chapter I'm in or just finished I mean it's almost about like Jane Austen conspiracy theories <laughs> <laughs> just uh, wild, really wild, or using Jane Austen in uh, therapy. Um, so yeah, it's 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 been stranger than I imagined, I guess. Um, what keeps what keeps drawing me back to this book is that I just keep thinking about Jane Austen's life and. You know, there's so many sad elements to her story. The fact that um, her parents suddenly decided to move to Bath um, with her and her sister Cassandra, and um, they lived there for 10 years. Um, at this point, Jane Austen had already, by the time they moved to Bath, Jane Austen had had written rough drafts of Northanger Abbey and um, Sense and Sensibility. I think they had different names um, at the time, and she'd written some other things. And 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 please, like I am not a Jane Austen expert, so like I've I've read this biography. That's that's about all I can say. But they moved to Bath, and she doesn't write anything other than maybe letters. Which then, of course, the other incredibly sad part of the of the story is the fact that it seems like even during even while she's alive she wants people to destroy her letters with as soon as they get them like the, there's mention of a, a letter to Cassandra that says like take the scissors to this you know as soon as you're done <laughs> so God only knows how many letters were destroyed, um, but Cassandra gets rid of a bunch of them, and uh, one of uh, Jane Austen's brothers preciously holds on to the letters that he has for the rest of his life, and when he dies, his daughter burns his the letters that he had from Jane Austen. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of letter burning going on there. 
Um, so, yeah, so there is definitely some things where, you know, Claire Tomlin is maybe speculating or um, trying to fill in the gaps, but I, for me, like, reading about that those 10 years of no writing, like, what could she have done in 10 years? I mean, can you imagine, like, a, like two more Jane Austen books, how wonderful that could be? I don't know. Like, I guess we were destined to have the six that we do and be really fortunate, <laughs> be really glad that we are. The other thing I thought was so interesting was, you know, this idea, Jason and I recently watched um, the Jane Austen Book Club film for the, I don't know, it's probably, yeah, we've seen it way too many times. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> but there's a discussion at one point about, you know, a char one of the characters says, you know, I think I think Jane Austen wrote these stories because she was lonely. Um, and uh, another character strongly disagrees. So she says, no, she could have she could have married at any time. And and Claire Tomlin would definitely say that that is not not true. That her opportunities were very limited, and um, she was engaged for basically an evening. She broke it off in the morning <laughs> and left. Um, she, it does seem like she loved someone, uh, Tom Lefroy, who uh, was from Ireland, and um, I think at one point really thought that that, that was going to be her destiny and she was going to raise kids and, you know, run the garden and a household and all that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, you know, it, it just didn't turn out that way. Um, and I don't know what Jane Austen would have, would she have traded her books? Would she have given those up in exchange for that life, for that other life? Um, the other thing so sad about the story is that she dies when she's 41. So, I mean, again, and, and there's speculation about what the cause of death was, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, like I said, I, reading it, I, there were times I was just moved almost to tears, which is astonishing for me, uh, for a biography, um, even, even just any work of nonfiction to, to move me that way, like, I, but I just really felt like if I was given the choice, like, who I wanted to have t tea with one day, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, I, I'm just so drawn to her and, and her life, and the fact that also Claire Tomlin makes the argument that, you know, uh, the characters in Jane Austen books are not, they're not people that Jane Austen actually knew. Like, she imagined them. She created them herself. It's, this is not, like, you know, there wasn't an Elizabeth Bennet that she was friends with. Um, there wasn't a Mr. Darcy who, you know, came around once in a while. Uh, so I, I really, I find that just astonishing that she could look at people and understand them so well and then kind of it seems almost like yeah like take different characteristics of people and and form them into Emma <laughs> or Miss Bates or whatever but uh yeah so just such a good book such a good book so this is five stars um we will wait and see <laughs> <laughs> what I what I end up deciding about among the J Knights, but that is kind of I have just been like Jane on the brain. <laughs> that's been that's been the theme this month. I told my husband I would promise as soon as Jane Austen July was over, I would work on the housework. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, I hope that you had a good day, that you have a great weekend, uh, that you're safe and well. Remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others. Oh, and don't forget, tell me in the comment section if you would like to enter my giveaway for Jane Austen July, which is a Jane Austen card, a journal, a lined journal with a quote from Mansfield Park on the cover, 
and a copy of Persuasion, which I realize many of you may already have, but maybe there's somebody in the world you'd like to give this to. It is a perfect copy. So um, let me know in the comments section if you'd like to enter that, and I will be doing the drawing on uh, July 31st. So thanks, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.